broadcast has been set. Good uh, evening, everyone. It is 7.03, September 6th, and this will um, begin our um, Parent and Community Advisory Council meeting for the 23-24 school year. Um, at this time, I want to move into roll call. Uh, Mr. Um, Carter Ross, can you please take the roll? Yes, sure. Um, Doc, Reverend Dr. Orlando Jermaine Bago. Mr. Lapps. Present. Dr. Sheila Jackson. Present. Ms. Carlotta Lundy. Present. Jared Dolores Millhouse. Present. Dr. Sharon Porter. Mr. T. Carter Ross is pre present. Uh, Vice Chair Keisha Thorpe. Present. Ms. Carol Walker. Uh, Ms. Walker, I believe you're muted. I'm present. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Robin Welsh. Present. Uh, Ms. Talise Wood. Uh, Chair, eight people being pre eight members being present. The quorum is noted. And if I could also note, after our last meeting, there was a question about how vacancies interacted with the quorum. I reached out to the Maryland Open Meetings Compliance Board, and they confirmed that because there are 15 seats on the council, a quorum is met when eight members are present. Uh, that number does not change due to vacant seats. Um, and a copy of that advisement will be attached to our minutes for this meeting. Thank you very much. And so I just want to welcome everyone to our um, second scheduled meeting for the school year. I'm very excited to have our board liaison, um, Mr. Jonathan Briggs here, who is the board member for District 2. Um, I am also excited to announce that we do have um, a superintendent liaison who's been appointed, Ms. Quincy Boyd, as it was mentioned um, during our um, August meeting. And so I just want to thank all the board members um, or the council members, I should say, that are here. But I want to thank the board members for the work um, that has been done over the summer. And I want to move into item 1.3, adoption of the September 6, 2023 meeting agenda. Can I have a motion from the floor for us to adopt the meeting agenda for September 6, 2023? I move that we adopt the September um, 2023 meeting okay. agenda. I second. So who was that that second? Dr. Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jackson. Okay. Thank you. And so we will move um, to the next item on the agenda, item 1.4 the approval of meeting minutes for um, the June 7th, 2023 meeting. So move, board, um, Council Member Lundy. Can we get a second? A second. Will Epps. Thank you. Thank you. And so at this time, we will accept the approval of the meeting minutes from the June 7, 2023 um, meeting. We'll move into the report of the chair, item 1.5. Um, <clears throat> I do wanna say this has been a very, very busy year and we just started. <laughs> um, I wanna say kudos to us as a council for getting the report together that got sent out um, in June. I wanna also, Thank you all for the input. I did spend some time going back, reading um, the minute meetings, looking at videos, making sure that I captured um, the information that was brought forward. And so I, again, applaud you all for the work that we were able to do last year, moving into this year as we focus on equitable engagement. Um, as we went into this new year, um, we were assigned two um, liaisons at this time um, Jonathan um, Briggs, who is district member um, for district two, board member for district two. He is um, the council liaison as well as Ms. Forbes, who is the student member of the board. She is also co-liaison. 
And Mr. Bridge, just for clarity, I want to make sure because in some instances it's co liaison, and then other instances it's that we have two liaisons. So um, at any point, just clarify. Um, but I'm going to communicate it as we having two liaisons. Um, and so that was a recommendation that we did send forward that they did here. I presented at the um, August 24th board meeting. Um, I presented our recommendations to the board. Um, we've had um, various um, emails that have gone back and forth over the past um, couple of months as it relates to what's happening with the PCAC, what are, um, what, what do we do? Like, how are we gonna be utilized as an advisory group? We are still awaiting a meeting with board leadership um, and the board as a whole. Um, the joint letter that was um, shared with you all, it has not yet been publicly communicated to the broader PGCPS um, group. So I am also waiting for that to happen. Um, we are also working with Mr. Briggs right now and Ms. Forbes who have um, compiled the, or created a new application. And I'm gonna say new Mr. Briggs, is it the same application that we utilized when we applied? Do you know? Uh, it's, it's new, we can say it's new. Okay. And so um, we have an application for to fill the vacancies. We have four vacancies. But right now, the application is only highlighting the three um, district seats and not the union um, seat. And so that may be following a different process because it wasn't um, on the application. Yeah, the application should have now. It's been, it's been updated. There was okay. a union and, and a nonprofit is added. Okay. And so um, I know that, you know, thank you, Mr. Briggs, for the work that you all are doing to not only get that um, communicated, um, to get it translated into other languages. So we are reaching a broader group of individuals so we can have um, a, a more robust group of individuals who apply, but that diversity is brought to the council as we've been hearing a lot that we need to make sure that people are represented, all groups are represented on the council, right? Um, I wanna also state and share that we met with the, meaning the officers met with um, Superintendent House and the chief of staff, Quincy Boyd, yesterday. And um, it was a very refreshing um, meeting discussing how do we um, work and support um, PGCPS in our role as advisors? What does that look like from a parent and community advisory standpoint? And um, how are we um, in this process with them proactively versus being told certain things and asked to share it out when our role is not to be an extension for communication um, based on our bandwidth, but to really support, advise, give recommendations and share things that we are also hearing in our district and in our um, specific areas. So um, I will say that they are asking, and we need to discuss a little later in this meeting um, for our um, schedules, because they would like to host a joint meeting with all of the entire council. Um, and we can do a hybrid, um, which allows some people, if they can't, to be virtual, to also be present. But the biggest thing is that having all of us in the room together is very impactful because we all have various um, perspectives on um, the districts that we serve, the roles that we play in the community in our own personal lives. So we have been extremely busy. <laughs> um, I did send a link out um, as the form that what's happening in your area. I um, do want to state that I did uh, receive um, one notice and Mr. Carter Ross, later on in the meeting, I will let um, you speak to what you submitted if that's okay. Um, the other piece that I really wanted to make sure that we are communicating is the, um, as a group, it's because we have so many vacancies, um, we, we need eight people, right, to be present. And so it's really, really important that you all communicate um, prior to the meetings if you are not going to be able to um, make it. We understand that there are emergencies 
but there are certain things that we need to vote on, um, such as we need to do today. So I just thank you um, for making the time. And I am going to state that um, Ms. Boyd was not able to be here. I know I sent it an email um, due to a prior engagement, but she stated that she um, may um, be able to just jump on for a quick moment, but if not, um, she will be sure to attend um, meetings in the future. And that is it for my report. Does anyone have any questions, comments, or anything to share before we move into um, item 1.6, report of the board liaison? Hearing none. We're moving on to item 1.6, report of the board liaison. Mr. Briggs, you're up. Oh, well, perfect timing. Uh, actually, that was likely what I was gonna share anyway. So um, I, I just want to share out a few things. Um, and so first, thank you, Chair Britt Milhouse for um, giving that rundown. Um, as you mentioned, we are busy kind of getting all of our ducks in a row, getting the year started and making sure that we are both in compliance with the bylaws that exist for the PCAC, as well as ensuring that we have um, a robust selection process for the vacancies that exist for the three districts and for the nonprofit and union position. So um, just the, the update I'll give is that Rain and I met today, Rain, the student board member, uh, that's also the co-board liaison. Um, and we discussed a, uh, an additional strategy for outreach to various communities. Um, so we're going to have something to share with the board liaison, Ms. Sharon Dent, um, around ensuring that the application and the nomination forms are posted publicly with PGCPS branding on the uh, PGCPS website. So that'll be up and ready to go by Friday. Um, we'll also have additional, you know, uh, visuals that are available for families and making sure that it's accessible for anyone who's applying, um, as well as kind of key bullet points so that those who are interested uh, know exactly and quickly what it is that they need to do as far as requirements go um, to be considered for the, the board. The, the one thing I do want to say is that as you're sharing um, this information, and this is to the um, PCAC members uh, for prospective parents, we do want to make sure that we have like a really thoughtful process. And so um, I definitely would encourage that you know, there are um, applicants that are kind of giving really well thought out responses to what they're saying, why they'd like to participate. Uh, we're going to we're, we're in the process of developing a rubric that we'll use, which is based on the board policy to really um, uh, go through the selection process uh, to make sure that it's aligned with the board policy, as well as kind of the spirit of what the PCAC hopes to accomplish, which was outlined in the report that was released in June. Um, beyond that, um, uh, as far as if, as far as any other steps, I'm happy to just share that if you have anything or if you think there are any additional considerations that should be going into this review and application process, please share that information with myself and with Rain as well um, and CC both of us and then include in there Ms. Barden, who uh, is supporting with uh, liaisoning on our behalf. So um, that is my report for today. Thank you all so much. If you have questions, happy to answer them. Thank, thank you, Mr. Briggs. Um, one, one thing I just wanted to ask, are they working to also make sure that it is translated into various languages? So they being we, yes, you're gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure. I mean, I know you're not doing the translation. So whoever you may be working with, the PGCPS and, you know, in the translation department, yeah. That's yeah, our right. yeah, our recommendation, and we can actually, you know, <laughs> the good thing is Google does allow you to transfer a lot, uh, to translate a lot of those things manually, so we can do that, but we'll definitely make in there the recommendation that it should be, um, you know, obviously uh, reflective of our community, which we have a significant Latinx population, so absolutely, um, it will be translated. Mm -hmm. or, or anyone else who may need the translation services as well. I, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. Um, and at this time, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Briggs? Um, um, Chairman Hill, uh, Ms. Barton has her hand up. Ms. Barton. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, we do have an Office of Interpretation and Translation that prefers that we use that office as opposed to using Google Translation. So um, as long as the document is sent to them, they can translate it and send it right back, you know, whichever way you want to send it out, we can have that done. Thank you so much. May I just add, Ms. Burden, thank you so much, Ms. Barden, thank you so much for that, because yes, our hands get slapped all the time in the school <laughs> system about Google Translate. 
And uh, Dr. Jennifer Love's team um, is simply outstanding in providing translations. So I'm not sure the protocol, I'm not sure if it's a board member that has to go through the superintendent or the board office, I guess, would handle that, just to make sure. So we don't want any roadblocks for you, Mr. Briggs. <laughs> yes, I appreciate that, Dr. Uh, Jackson. And yeah, I want to just clarify that we're going to go through all proper protocols for PGCPS. So even with branding, when we think about like what, you know, images can be on the website, essentially that's all going to go through the various offices. So we'll have a draft up of recommended kind of, you know, content and specific information, but then we'll leave that kind of creative leeway as well as the additional steps that need to be completed uh, to the teams that handle those pieces. Um, so thank you for that additional piece. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. Um, I, I do have um, to just, I, I want to say thank you um, for um, the countless emails that you, you haven't had to encounter that I've been a part of. Um, thank you for the responses. Thank you for the proactiveness. Um, I, I appreciate that. And if we can just add one more thing to your plate, that joint letter, um, once it was signed, it did not reflect the current officer change, um, and it was not distributed to the um, community as a whole. So if we can move that forward, I don't see whose hands is up. I don't know. That's, that's me, if you're okay with me going. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so Ms. Sharon Dent responded uh, about that letter and there's gonna be, um, so so I've communicated, I think we, we had this communication via email, so happy to share this with everyone, but I'm completely fine with releasing the letter um, now, and then once we have those vacancies filled, also having the updated name that you mentioned. Um, but I also know that there was a pause uh, by the administration, the, the superintendent's team. So once I get an update on that being okay to send out, um, whether it's with, we, if we already have those vacancies filled or it's before we have them filled, um, I'm okay with either way. And I'll just follow up with the entire group um, and you uh, to ensure that you're aware of what's happening. Thank you. I mean, but because or something can come out that we are here in a sitting committee other than it's just sitting on the website um, because no one it's not really been broadcast widely that we are here. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm sorry, there's a situation in the room that I'm in at the school. I apologize. If, if, um, if we can move to item 1.7, report of superintendent designees, if there are no other questions. Sheila, are you gonna present first? Please go ahead. Um, my computer is doing strange things, so please <laughs> go ahead. Um, so um, I'm excited that we're gonna be discussing this evening um, Policy 1500, which is the Parent uh, Community Advisory Council, because we then have a Policy and Governance Committee meeting next Tuesday. And the the suggestions and ideas that you bring forward in terms of uh, what you would like to see within that policy, I will then take back to the committee. And uh, we're, we're going to be, we have to open the, the policy up also because uh, Bill had passed this past year. And it said that the citizens, and this is good for you, Board Member Briggs, also to know, a citizen advisory committee established by Prince George's County Board of Education shall re reflect to an extent practicable the geographic, racial, ethnic, cultural, and gender diversity of the county. So they want to make sure that it's diverse and it's reflecting our community. Um, but we will then um, be discussing that policy. The committee will be discussing the policy and definitely take into consideration all the suggestions that come from this committee, as well as I would um, really uh, encourage anyone within this committee, if you would like to attend the Policy and Governance Committee meeting and be a, a public speaker, provide public comment. There is a public comment section in that committee meeting. And I know the committee members would absolutely love to hear from each of the representatives from the districts, uh, your thoughts on the, on the actual policy. So please take advantage of this opportunity to provide your input. The other thing that we are currently working on is the um, uh, legislative, um, I don't know what you want to call it, a position paper or a platform or priority paper because the legislative session will begin in January, actually on January 10th. And so we as a system would like to be able to 
articulate what is important to Prince George's County Public Schools, as well as what are things that we would oppose. So we are hoping to have that draft completed um, um, no later than the end of September. And what would be ideal would be the, the PTAC meets on November the, I mean, October the 11th, that I have the opportunity to present the draft of that to you and get your input because the following week, then the policy and governance committee meets. And so any input that you can provide as we put together this position statement, um, certainly we will take into consideration, and I know the board members also will, as we work forward to finalize that um, position statement. So those, um, uh, Ms. Milhars, were my basic two things, had to do with the policy and then the le legislative um, position paper. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Welsh. Um, does anyone have any questions? I mean, I, the, the policy is going to be discussed later on in the meeting. Um, and I had we had started with some recommendations that we sent forward in the report. Um, but I'm quite sure that, um, I mean, I know how I have a few things to add to the list. And so I want to send that out, get everyone's feedback so we can compile something that we send forward as a committee again. Thank you, Ms. Welsh. Dr. Jackson? Uh, um, Ms. Milhars, I think that um, board member Briggs has his hand up. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I can't see. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm happy to come off mute if that's okay. If if it's like today is a, a you know, take. No, 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 um, no, I don't have technical issues. I, I just can't see it when I, because I'm not the presenter or not uh, co-host. So I was just going to say, uh, Ms. Welsh, I think I'm not sure if it would be helpful to or if you plan to do this already, but um, if when we have the legislative, uh, well, the, the set of policy priorities for the year, as we're kind of looking throughout the year, I know there are certain priorities that parents are more concerned about, like boundary changes, even though that won't necessarily be on the agenda, I don't believe, but um, other things. Um, I, I was just curious if you'd be sharing that with uh, PCAC or if you plan to do that. I can share that with them. I mean, I had, was not intending to, uh, to today. I was, I mean, we can do it once the committee, I guess, approves it, or we can, I can, um, I can find it and, 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 and actually um, move it forward as um, it hasn't been presented yet to policy and governance committee yet. So, but I, as the new changes, cause we did, I did make changes. Like we now have 1500 as one of the first ones. And we also have the other policy that has to do with parent engagement. That's one of the early ones. Um, but certainly I can, um, the, the actual recommendations for policies are ones that are already set, but as far as the location of when we're working on them throughout the year, certainly there's room to make adjustments to that. Um, yeah. Oh, and just not to complicate, I was just suggesting like once it's once it's finalized, like if you just oh, share it. So I'll be glad yeah, to. Yeah, 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 that's what I meant. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. Thank you, Ms. Welsh. Um, and so at this time, does anyone have any other questions for Ms. Welsh? Comments? Dr. Jackson? Well, good evening, everyone. And I will do my best to be brief, but I'm telling you, it's such a dynamic opening to our school year. Uh, I, for one, uh, and my department have gone through a bit of a transition. Uh, we now report, uh, and again, it's all in flux, but right now, <laughs> Uh, our office, our department has been renamed to Department of Family and Community Partnerships. And those of you who've been around a while know that I started out about 10 years ago as family and community engagement. Mm -hmm. And the community and business part was taken out and now they've come back. So um, I'm blessed that I've grown from three specialists to two more, <laughs> five of, of the specialists now. Uh, and they're all moving to their home with me at John Carroll. Um, and so we're really excited. Uh, coming to our team will be uh, Ron Wilson, who's in charge of strategic partnerships, business partnerships, faith-based partnerships, and Janice Cook, who's in charge of our volunteer programs uh, and a huge variety of other things. So again, we're small, 
We serve all schools, all 200 plus schools in the district, but also do outreach to families directly, to partners correct, uh, directly as well. So I'm excited about that transition. And we've had the opportunity mm -hmm. to meet with uh, Raven Hill, who was now my direct supervisor and her direct supervisor is Chief uh, Tejal Patel, who's our Chief of Communications and Community Engagement. So we're working, uh, again, transition is busy, but the work doesn't stop. And so um, we're excited about, you know, just having that opportunity to, again, think about and be strategic in our work to make sure that we're engaging all families and, and, and making sure that we are having, I love what you said, uh, board member Briggs about our branding. Um, you know, our um, superintendent uh, shared his 90-day uh, entry plan, and I was happy to see that one of his big categories was family and community engagement, and it wasn't, you know, it was an overview. It wasn't, he didn't drill down into what we call the SMART goals, but at least he's talking about it, and, and so he's giving us an opportunity to help shape what that will look like, and I, I'm excited about that. Um just quickly, I just want to share some updates with you. Uh, my team, uh, the Family and School Partnerships Specialist, and I will be presenting at a National Family Engagement Summit in Kansas City uh, in uh, October. Uh, October is a very busy month because it will also have a, an opportunity for um, parent-teacher conferences. So schools will be closed for students so that um, parents can come in uh, to have conferences with, with their children's teachers. Um, October 16th, uh, we will be hosting our first quarterly conversation and the guest that night will be our superintendent and PCAC members, yes, you will get a special invitation as soon as that is developed. Uh, I know Miss um, uh, Shannon uh, is in charge of that for, for my team. Uh, but we want to make sure uh, we would like to do it in person. So we're we're hoping that we can make that happen on October 16th. Um, the other thing that's happening for us, uh, of course, you all know that this. So that's October. But this month, September is every night. There are back to school nights happening. So hopefully you all have had an opportunity to attend those uh, at the schools that your children <laughs> attend. Uh, and, you know, hopefully you can give us feedback because we're constantly looking to see how do we improve that experience for parents. And you all would be an outstanding group to give us feedback on that. Uh, as a parent of four that came through Prince George's County Public Schools, we were always challenged with the feeder schools having their back to school nights the same night. And we had to actually enlist my my in-laws to help us to, you know, make sure that we could go to those and support our children. But please, please support uh, your children at their back to school nights and give us feedback because, again, uh, it's a model that can definitely be tweaked. We don't want it to be the cattle call where you just heard parents from classroom to classroom. We want you to be able to have meaningful conversations as well. Uh, we will share with you all um, our calendar for our family institute sessions that will kick off in October. And we, we tried to have one in August to welcome all parents back to the school system. And as you all know, we were hacked. So no parents could get into that session. I had a whole bunch of Prince George's County Public Schools employees at that meeting and no parents could get in. So hopefully that hack has been completely fixed. So as we go forward and having those virtual meetings, parents can get in with no problem. But they will kick off in October, and I've asked Mrs. Milhouse to join me on the first one uh, that we're going to do at the beginning of October. Uh, because October is Parent Teacher Conference Month, we want to talk about that. But I wanted to start with something that's been created by PCAC, and I call I always call it Jumpstart. Is that the right name, Ms. Milhouse? She's you're muted. Yeah, you're muted. Yes, it's Jumpstart Your Engagement. Yes, and I just thought that would be a wonderful way 
for us to be begin that conversation. Jumpstart your engagement, which is a huge overview of all the things that parents need to know and how to navigate the system. And then part of it will be helping parents make sure that they're ready for parent-teacher conferences. Um, but that will kick off at, at the beginning of October. Then we have, our again, our um, parent leadership meeting with the superintendent. Um, I want to thank Robin Welsh because she has all school system employees going through safe schools training. <laughs> and thank you uh, for being flexible. She actually had to change the date. They were due August 28th. And because of the hack, um, our due date now is September 17th. I think we had about, what, nine modules that we needed to do. And um, one of the things that I think you all can appreciate is that these are required for uh, school system staff. And if they don't complete them, they get a kind of ding from their um, chief about, no, these are required for us as, as making sure that we understand all of the things that are needed to keep our children safe and to keep ourselves safe. We learn about bloodborne, I mean, airborne diseases, all of that is part of what we need to be able to understand and know what to do and to respond to. Just then, two two more things. I'm sorry, Mrs. Milhouse. Um, I've received a message from Ms. Tyler uh, about the uh, climate and culture survey. That's an annual uh, process. And that will be, I, I asked her to share it with uh, uh, PCAC as soon as possible, as soon as it's ready, so that we can make sure that we get your input into that process. It's going to be shared with all families but she would love it if you all could be like a focus group that could give uh, direct, you get the results and you give an get an opportunity to give some direct feedback to that. Um, so that will be happening in October as well. Uh, and then my last thing is November is National Family Engagement Month. And we will be developing um, a board action summary uh, to make sure that our Board of Education um, issues a proclamation honoring that month and, you know, with some tips about things that schools can do and families can do to make sure that we honor the power of that op opportunity for families to be engaged. So it's National Family Engagement Month in November. So that is all on my list for tonight, but I just want to thank everybody uh, can I thank you one more on um, drive and dash was completely successful um, with so many families driving through at Oxon Hill High School, Charles Herbert Flowers and High Point High School to pick up those free backpacks. And it was a hot day, but parents were out there and students re uh, received uh, service hours. Uh, it was a very successful day. So thank you all. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Jackson. And I want to just piggyback off of something that you mentioned, the um, online safe schools training. I want the PCAC members to um, be reminded that this is an annual requirement for all volunteers as well. So please submit your applications, get them in and complete your safe school training by the 17th as well. Thank you. Ms. Welsh, your hand is up. And I just, I wanted to piggyback on what uh, Sheila said as far as safe schools, as to let you know that not, so we do track all the training for all of our employees. I, I didn't, didn't, if you might know this, so just to let inform you. And we run compliance reports that are for every division and every department so that we know how everyone's doing. Um, and in the past, like Dr. Golson would follow up if we had divisions or departments that did not have like, a, you know, high percentage of completion. So that was one thing. And the other thing I wanted to share is that some of the courses, just so you get a, a flavor for what we do require of our employees, we do, uh, we look at a lot of different areas. So like we have the Americans with Disab Disabilities Act overview. So we're looking at the rights of people with disabilities, um, Sheila did talk about bloodborne pathogens. We do have about reporting suspected child abuse. And then we have stuff about the strategic plan, but we also have discrimination awareness in the workplace. 
Um, and we have also an employee code of conduct that goes through all the responsibilities of employees in terms of the expectations that they're supposed to do. And then just uh, and then we also have Title IX um, compliance and tells people what they can and cannot do. And if they feel that they have been uh, discriminated against, they um, that what their what their rights are and what they can do to report that um, and what protections they have. And we also have one on youth suicide because youth suicide is so the, the percentage of students who are stu that's children really in that um, that commit suicide or attempt to commit suicide is extremely high. So we want all of our staff to be fully aware of what the signs are so that if they were to run into a student that, that is, is exhibiting these signs, they can contact um, the guidance counselor at the school and also the parents to make sure they're informed and get help for the child. So that just gives you sort of a sense. We really try to provide a lot in terms of just what are what's good behavior on all of our parts as we work together. And then what are the things we need to do for our students? Thank you so much, everyone. And so I'm sorry, I'm, I'm out of school, so you can hear that in the background. But um, do we have any more questions or comments for Dr. Jackson, Dr. Jackson or Ms. Welsh? I'll go. I don't I know you can't. Mr. See. Briggs, I yes. see you. Yep, I got okay. my other computer up. Okay, great. Um, so I just wanted to say, uh, Dr. Jackson, thank you so much for that presentation. I was going to also um, piggyback off of what Ms. Welsh was just saying as an additional piece. But I wanted to say to you, I'd love it if you could speak more to the climate and culture survey, because I know that. Um, some families know, but then for maybe for those watching might not have an idea of like just the, the impact that that has on the school culture and climate. Um, so I want to pause there and see if you have anything to share. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for asking, uh, Mr. Briggs. That climate and culture survey asked parents to respond to, you know, how welcoming is your school? What kind of voice do you have in shared decision making? And parents' feedback helps us as a district shape what we do. So because of some of the things that were said in last year's survey uh, about the lack of welcoming environments, uh, we've actually had to do a pivot to make sure we went back to teaching customer service. And that is one of the courses uh, that I will be offering this year. Uh, our Office of Human Resources will be offering, offering on a regular basis to staff to understand that you know parents are our number one customer. So we have to make sure that our environments are welcoming, that parents feel valued, that they feel heard, and that we create opportunities for them to, to really have you know, effective input. Um, so the climate and culture survey is really important. It even asks questions about how my child feels about school. Does my child feel accepted? Does my child uh, feel welcome? All of those things go into, into that survey because, again, it, it informs all of us as practitioners, whether it's classroom teachers, whether it's administrators, whether it's bus drivers, we all receive data from that. And, and it helps us uh, hopefully improve what we do so that, you know, again, we, we want our children coming to school feeling safe. We want them to feel accepted. Um, we want them to feel a sense of belonging. And so that climate and culture survey is very important uh, for us for that. And, and again, we're gonna, they're gonna, uh, the office is gonna turn it right back around and call in what we call focus groups to analyze that data and talk about what this data means and give the school system advice on what you think we might need to do differently. So thank you. Thank you for asking about that. It is a powerful, uh, mechanism for collecting data. And it happens early in the year and they process it um, and give us that feedback starting in January and February. Yeah. And I really appreciate that because I know that like, uh, I believe the Maryland's, uh, the Maryland State Department of Education, their report card they release includes in the school rating, the 
um, the climate. And so parents look at that when you think about what school to send your child to, or it's the right fit for you. Um, so forth. the last thing I was going to say was that the, um, just Ms. Welsh mentioned the safe schools training. And of course, obviously, uh, Chair uh, Britton Millhouse said the same thing. And just want to say like, that actually was something that we uh, at least came up in one of our policy and governance committee meetings during the last school year, which would be like really important for uh, PCAC to be aware of, because, you know, things like mental health, belonging, connectedness, that are, you know, major areas of focus, I think coming out of the pandemic for youth in particular um, is something that I know many parents are concerned about. And so that's also, an, you know, an opportunity to think about how we can update those trainings to really reflect um, the needs of our students in a way that maybe teachers or educators might not give it that parents uniquely get. That is awesome. And that was would really be appreciated because, again, we we only get better because of accepting input from our, our community. So thank you for that. And I, I raised my hand because I did not say that uh, on um, the parent code of conduct is going to be reviewed uh, September 20th. We will be offering a session just to help parents understand what their rights and responsibilities are and what happens if we find ourselves in violation of any of the expectations for parents in our school system. And that was created because again, we had a student code of conduct, we have a staff code of conduct, we had never had one for parents. And we're looking for opportunities to make it a, a viable document because right now we don't have a sign off on it and we wanna make sure we you know, elevate it to that level of importance in our school system. So that was my last point. And I see Mr. Epps has his hand up. I guess he has a question. Yes, ma'am, Dr. Jackson. Good seeing everyone. Ms. Welch, thank you for your update as well. I just had one question around, I believe you said the gentleman's name was Ron Wilson, Rod yes. Wilson, for the, um, he's in charge of the business partnerships and faith partnerships. And I was just curious as to know if you, and I know he's uh, in a new role. Is there any insight that you give uh, uh, I guess, based on what he may be looking to roll out from an engagement standpoint. And if not, I just want to connect with him. Uh, I, I, I yeah. will make sure that you connect with him uh, right now. Uh, we are collecting data. He has a database of all the partnerships that are associated with different schools. Uh, he has a database of all the partnerships that are in the school system. And he's updating that right now. Yeah. Uh, but as soon as all of that is available, we will definitely make it available to our broader public because it's wonderful to know. Some, some of us are connected to schools and we don't even know what partners they may have. Right. So that that's going to be uh, significant. He's also planning to have a convening of faith-based partners. Uh, we started that about five years ago. And um, we want to revitalize that because that's a powerful opportunity to have all denominations that are represented here in Prince George's County have an opportunity to come together and talk about how we support schools because, you know, our children uh, go to different faith organizations in the county. It's wonderful to have those partnerships in place. Many of them have adopted schools and they have actual formal MOUs. Uh, with schools as well. And so I want to make sure that you all have that information as well. Ah, and I always I forget, we're also updating the parent leadership organization database. We do that annually. So as soon as that is done, uh, their deadline to have it to me is October, uh, October 16th. And as soon as we get that database cleaned up, we'll share it with our Board of Education, with PCAC, with our superintendent, so that you all will see what schools have what type of organization or not, because there are some communities that have expressed that it's very difficult um, to, but we, we encourage every school to have some type of parent leadership organization. And we wanna share that with you all. Thank you very much. Um, I just want to make a couple of points of clarification, um, Mr. Epps. Mr. Wilson, that's not a new position for him. Um, he was, he's been in that role for some years now. Um, it's just now transitioned under Dr. Jackson. Um, and Mr. Briggs, as you mentioned and spoke about the climate and culture survey, um, we had worked very closely with Ms. Tyler and her team. Um, we um, were also a part of some focus groups and um, I, I would definitely say that we were probably very instrumental 
in um, advocating for um, the group to begin to have those focus groups. Um, one of the, if in the report itself, we speak to the climate and culture survey and speak to it in a way that there wasn't really anything that um, aligned with engagement. Asking me if I come into the school, is it welcoming? Is not really engagement. Right. It's just, you know, how welcoming is the school, but I can't say how welcoming it is if I can't get into the school. Another piece is you can only respond to the survey based on one child. So if I have multiple children, that doesn't mean that each school is going to have the same feel and engagement practices in place. And so those were some of the suggestions that we made that if you're going to do a survey of what's happening in the school district, when families have multiple children, let me respond based on what may be very different from one schoolhouse to the other. And that way you can get a better understanding of what systemically may be happening and what may not be happening. And so um, I can say that the PCAC has been very involved in meeting with Ms. Tyler and providing some recommendations. So I appreciate you all having that dialogue around the climate and culture survey because it is important and we are, I'm wanting people to understand that it's a lot more than you just, how do I feel coming into the building, right? What happens when I get in that building is what we want to start digging into and what do we do with this data once we get it. So um, if there is nothing else, any other questions, comments, um, I want to move forward in the agenda. Um, does anyone have anything? No? So Dr. Jackson, Ms. Welsh, thank you so much um, for your um, uh, report and thank you very much everyone for the engagement. Um, now I wanna move on to items two, discussion and action item. Very quickly, Ms. Welsh already spoke um, about the revisions of board policy 1500, how it is now um, on the list for um, review and update. And so we did provide some recommendations in the report um, but this is also an opportunity for us to address several things, um, such as the application process, the timeline for the board to fill vacancies that are present, um, how we are, or how the board is actually, um, and so Mr. Briggs, thank you for sharing that there is a, um, uh, I don't wanna call it a matrix, but a, a grading grid or something that you had mentioned. Um, and how you're going to assess the applicants and then what dialogue you all will have and whether or not it comes to a board vote or is it just you all's recommendation and it's accepted by the group. So those are opportunities for us to make suggestions um, in every area in some holes that may exist that are not already reported, but um, also a recommendation that we talked about is moving forward with having an administrative procedure that also aligns with board policy 1500. And I'm not sure if that is something that would um, be discussed in the policy um, committee and brought forward to um, Superintendent House, um, but that also moves into our bylaws because we need to address um, what happens when we have the vacancies, what do we do when someone resigns, what's the importance of us having a report of what happens if someone's not fulfilling their roles and responsibilities. So um, I began to work on that, looking at um, various groups um, in their bylaws, and I just see opportunities. And we spoke about it during the retreat, like what happens when the new group comes in and how do we help them transition in? And it's not just a cold transfer of um, duties and responsibility. So is there going to be you know, individuals who may stay on for a couple of months to help the team transition in, but us being able to lay that out to present to the board the recommendation, because the idea is once we move into our new season and then the next group comes in, we want them to have a very smooth transition. And so um, I will be sending those recommendations um, or the list for, for people to give their feedback. I will create you know, the Google form is already out there. I will create another form, but I am asking that you all um, take the next couple of weeks to review those documents, provide some feedback so we can collectively um, come together, review them and then vote as well. And um, if we have any member that is looking to 
um, help lead that endeavor, please raise your hand and don't hold your peace. Anybody but Robin, because <laughs> she's, she's already doing 8,000 policies. So, um, but I am, all, we've already taken a couple of stabs at it and it's in the recommendation report and uh, we just need to build on to that. Any questions, comments? Nope. Moving on to item 2.2, partnering with board members. Um, it's a new school year. It's a new opportunity to make sure that you are meeting with your board members. I will say what I have seen, um, and please chime in, what I've seen with my board member is really just getting the understanding of where he is, what he is looking to do as it relates to um, how he's engaging his constituents. How do I support him in an advisory capacity? Um, there are some boundaries that we always have to um, define um, because I am one person. I don't have the capacity to run to each schoolhouse and meet with each um, PTA or PTO. Um, but what I encourage him is like many of the other um, districts, when they have meet and greets, that's a great way to um, bring a group of people together and engage with the group versus having to go to several different places. And so I just wanna open up for some quick discussion if anyone else has anything to share, because I am looking to um, maybe with in October, we provide, October, November, I'll say November, provide some recommendations to the board on um, around what we're seeing and is engaging in some practices that we can maybe put in place to help what they do on a um, dish just for their districts. But what can we do that across the board that can work? Such as when Dr. Jackson has the parent leadership um, summits. You know what training could happen? How can we gain to build capacity um, when we meet with the board leadership and the board as a whole? as well as the superintendent. Um, these are some ideas that we may have, but we really wanna also be in a space for them to share with us what some of their pain points are, to get our feedback from where we sit. Um, how can they better engage with the civic um, community? How can they better engage with the business community? Um, I did ask, um, the, well, I've spoken to all of our specialty areas. Ms. Lundy will be presenting uh, rather shortly, but we want to make sure that we're hearing their voice. Some of them are playing a dual role as parent and representing that um, specific um, community. But what are some of the things that need to be brought to the attention of the board? And so I'm going to put a pin in that. Does anyone have anything to add as some feedback, just a quick um, tidbit on what they've shared, what they've well, shared, what you've done? Ms. Walker. Um, I know for uh, District 8, we sat down and we discussed the year-long calendar and what events will be taking place each month. But also, I have um, reached out to several PTAs, PTSAs, PTOs, and they're, one of the biggest issues within our district is just um, engaging in schools as far as actually having chartered PTSAs or PTOs and what that looks like and helping the parents in the community charter PTSAs and what that looks like and what the process is and the steps they have to go through that. Because there are some schools that want to have this level of parent engagement and for whatever reason, the PTSA has disbanded, they're no longer meeting was a new group of parents and community leaders that are coming in that want to get back to the basics of let's engage on a PTSA level. Um, let's make sure that we have a connection between home and students and teachers and really have an open dialogue within the community, within each school community. So that's something that I know have like specifically I've worked specifically with the state PTA and with um, Friendly High School, as far as being for them to be able to get a new charter. They said they've been going through the process for like two years, but having those connection points, having those um, 
contacts of who do I need to contact to start a PTSA? Um, what information do I need to know? What do we need to do? Those type of things I found have been uh, a challenge for a lot of schools and especially particularly in District 8. Okay, so that, that's very interesting to know. And I think that we can further the dialogue um, and bring in the Free State, right, PTA, and, and have some conversations with them. Um, my, my biggest concern, though, is the continuity, right? And like you said, if a group doesn't, is not in a position to make sure that they are handling all the business components of managing the PTA, then it, it loses its credentials. They have to start back over. And so I know, Dr. Jackson, your team is um, really, and I know I spoke to Ms. Shannon, um, speaking to how do we help parents organize, but maybe it's not under the umbrella, right? Where it's holding so many roles and responsibilities of checking all of these dots on the federal and state level, right? To get this accreditation, but they can organize and still be a parent group, but not with all of the extra paperwork that comes with it. Dr. Uh, Mr. Um, Epps. Yeah, so one comment I wanted to add just around just the engagement piece. We I live in District 5, even though I represent the um, business community uh, for PCAC's purposes. And I think the engagement piece that um, uh, I guess I see that is problematic for the meet and greet. There was a meet and greet uh, by our, our district uh, representative. And I believe uh, someone from the office, a new member from the, uh, from the office came in, but we found out the same day as the meeting greet. And so I did check with some of my peers to find out, hey, did you get an email from any other channel or whatever it was? And the feedback that I got was, no, we just found out the same day. And as we are ramping up, we all have the same ramp up issue. All parents, you know, we're all getting ready, you know, for, for the beginning of the school year. For us to find out the same day, I don't, that, that can't, I just think that there has to be another way to do so in order to engage uh, parents' property to give, to give enough notice uh, for the actual meet and greets that are happening. Thank you for that. And that's one of the things when that jumpstart your engagement document that when parents are um, signing up for various things that you actually do have to go in and sign up for each board member's um, um, I want to say listserv, but that's not, it's not a listserv, but for it to get any communication for them. So it's not really an automatic thing that happens. Like you actually have to go in and drill down to the specific district members and click on if you want to send, receive information from them, right? And, and that's the thing. I don't think most people, we talk about the, the school bucks and we talk about how to go on board. We talk about all those things but we miss out, how do you make sure? And I, I think the jump start to your engagement is a good start, but it really was a recommendation and to have a more broader, robust conversation on how do we take something like that and create it where we mentioned before, sending out short video snippets, like make sure you did this to stay engaged with me, you know, to stay engaged with the board members. Um, so, you know, when I hear you say that, it's one of the things that, you know, we definitely need to make sure that our board members, right, Mr. Briggs, if we can take this back, how do we ensure that we, we are utilizing that jumpstart in a way us, we created it, but it should be a document that is actually um, more robust than just the list of links that we created, right? It's a one page document and so us creating those things, as well as what Ms. Walker is saying, we are recommending things in the report, but it's not like, oh, take it and just move along with it. It's like, have a conversation, look at the capacity that you all have as a school system to say, how do you build upon this? Or you don't have the capacity. Um, but I think those are low hanging fruit, right? That we could resolve rather quickly uh, with a, a quick, you know, message that goes out on um, 
I guess everything else, the robocalls or everything else that they may send out, how do we get that out to make sure that people are connected with their board members and know how to do that to go in and drill down to say, hey, I'm, I need to click here to make sure I'm getting a newsletter or the information from Mr. Briggs when it comes out, right? So I, I think those are, again, opportunities. Um, and so Ms. Walker and Mr. Epps, thank you um, for, for posing that. And I think that's also an opportunity for us to really um, move forward. And so Ms. Walker, are you in a position to contact um, I mean, we can contact Gerard, right? And, and speak to him about how can we kind of get some items around helping these families, right? To organize yeah, so a new level. Spe specifically for Friendly High School, I was able to reach out to him because he was once the PTSA president of um, Maya Angelou and I was on the uh -huh. board, the PTSA board. So I was able to call him while I was meeting with them and he met with them yesterday to resolve their issues. Mm -hmm. But definitely I can reach out to him and ask him, you know, what specific information do we need? Can we create a document? Can we create a video or what have you so that um, schools know? Like there are parents, you know, that want to engage in that way, but mm -hmm. there are specific barriers. Like he has access to that information because he's a president, right? So yeah. um he was quickly able to go in, check the database and say, oh, you're missing this, this, and this document. This is what you need to do. And he could specifically speak on it. So we may be able to partner with him just to do a training session of yep. how do I start a PTSA? How do I start a PTO? And what is the what are the benefits of having a PTSA and being associated with the free state? Um, within in Maryland and, and how does this benefit the community? So those are things that are probabilities and possibilities mm -hmm. and easily accessible for us to do. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great idea. And so, um, you know, can I, can I tap you with taking the charge and leading that for the PCAC and then seeing how we can, you know, get a group of parents together who may be interested in you know, um, whoever needs to help us with spacing, right? <laughs> the location for it, um, even if it needs to be hybrid, I think we should have that as an option for it as well. Um, and so, so thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. Yes, you can sign me up for that. I will. I can do that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> do we have any other um, comments to share? Questions. And so I, I do want to um, use this time really um, just briefly because Mr. Ross, you did send in a comment for District 3. And um, one of the things, and I'm just going to speak to it rather quickly and paraphrase it and jump in, <clears throat> that a great thing that's happened is there are two blueprint schools um, in District 3. And I, I will say I know um, the district board member um, Ms. Um, Boozer Strother works very hard to engage with her community. And uh, this is proof of these schools being able to have um, this, these new facilities by them working together, them advocating and pushing for something um, that they wanted for their students. And so the Hyattsville Middle School and the Sonia Sotomayor Middle School at Adelphi in both held open houses, which were attended by PGCPS and local officials in the community. And, um, you know, it was a well-attended event. And then they also have a new principal at Northwestern High School. Um, and so it just speaks volumes when we're talking about engagement. When, when people feel like they are a part of something, they will come out and support. And there were some, um, some things that we really want to focus on is the changing of the rules for the clear backpacks. You know, some information came out, you know, for everyone, and then it kind of changed midstream. And so we have to understand that when we do that, you may have community members and community partners that may go out and they may run and get all these clear backpacks to donate, right? Or they may not have the clear backpacks to donate. So I want to turn that piece over if you want to speak a little bit to that. Um, and, and talk about what you all may be working on in that regards, Mr. Um, Carter-Ross. 
Um, yeah, well, it, it's not something we're working directly on. It's more sort of an observation that there mm -hmm. is a uh, general community um, or within parts of, of uh, the community here in District 3, definitely there are people who are concerned that the, the clear backpack policy, um, the change in how it was implemented was a little upsetting or unsettling, but also just a concern that it isn't as well backed by data. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for effects that it, that it will be an effective policy or or to will serve the the intended goal. So it's um, one of the the community newspapers ran an article with showing look how many things we could hide in a clear backpack um, and things like that. So it's one of those just sort of like looking at the the way that type of a policy is developed implement and um, and implemented, but also making sure that there's uh, you know, strong, strong data and not just sort of a sentimental uh, uh, rationale behind presenting it or, or implementing it. Um, but also just like talking, looking back on the um, the school openings for the two new school openings and the new principal, one really heartening thing was to see how many uh, civic leaders were appearing at those. Uh, so at the new principal from Northwestern, some parents, we had a uh, mayor from uh, Brentwood was there. Uh, uh, the 47B delegate was there. Um, former county council member was there. Uh, school board, current school board member and prior school board member were there. Um, among some some leaders from some of the civic associations that are in the uh, unincorporated areas um, of the the schools catchment basin. So it was just really good to see so many people who also have larger networks and, and supports that they can connect to being there to support the new principal um, in her role and letting her know that the, and the students who are also there that, you know, our communities are here to support the school and our students. And this is, you know, a part of what we all are. Yeah, that that's good. And, and that it takes a community, right? It, it really mm -hmm. does take a community. So thank you so much and kudos to the community for showing up and showing out for the new principal. Um, do we have anything else? And I wanna thank everyone for their um, comments. Any other questions, comments, anything else to share? Okay, we are moving right along with the agenda. We are moving right into item 2.3. Um, civic engagement, proposed training, how to prepare and testify. I'm led by a civic engagement liaison or representative, I should say, Miss Carletta Lundy. And um, if you can take a few moments and share this training with us and what you're proposing and um, take it away. Sure, thank you, Chair Mayor House. Ms. Barton, you can share the um, presentation or just the Thank you. All right. Okay. My my eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So can we make it a little larger? Is that possible? I can I can make my own. And Miss Lundy, I'll say this. You if you can just give an overview um for because we Yeah, have... I'm not gonna go down this. I have other comments. Okay. Okay. So All thank right. you so much. I am so excited to have this opportunity to talk about this. Um, so basically this resource guide, and I prepared my remarks. How to Prepare and Testify is a guide to prepare district residents um, to give official testimony. The vision for this is to help um, parents see themselves um, as being a part of the decision making in their child or children's educational experience. Um, so there are various examples of why parents decide to testify, um, you know, around making decisions about things that are gonna impact their children. And one specific example that I wanna bring up is parents who have children with special health care needs, for example, asthma, diabetes, or food allergies, um, have opportunities to help develop or even shape staff professional development events. For example, they may wanna um, advocate for educational sessions relating to chronic health, um, conditions such as asthma, diabetes, or food allergies. And so you can read this at your leisure if it's on the Google Doc Drive, but the goals or the outcomes objectives for this training is four, is four levels of it. The first goal or objective is to gain skills and knowledge. This is the parents. They will gain skills and knowledge necessary 
um, to advocate, <clears throat> excuse me, on behalf of their child or children. The second goal is they will gain insight about how to write and deliver testimony as a partner in their child or children's education. Also, they will, the third goal or objective or outcome is they will see how to be of greater influence for their children and their child as a, um, as a courageous and confident agent. And this is important, I want you to hear this, as a courageous and confident agent of change in lieu of not just being a recipient of the change. Let that just stick in. To see how to be of greater influence for their child or children as a courageous and confident agent of change not just a recipient of the change. And lastly, but not um, least, I think this is very important to also another outcome would be to develop friendships and relationships and cultivate these relationships with like-minded parents who are advocating for similar changes to make positive change in their children's educational, I'm calling it experience, because that's exactly what it is, an educational experience. So my ask tonight, um, is well first of all let me back up because my background is in um, I'm a former councilwoman and also involved in some other things and advocacy been doing this work for years and what have you I see the importance of making sure our parents understand and understand their role and knowing how important it is that they have a say in the um, what happens as a result of how they impact their child's education being involved in the decision making of people who are making decisions on their behalf so I want to ask this evening among my colleagues um, I want to see who among the PCAT would be willing to partner with me to facilitate the planning for this educational training I'm calling an experience. And I'm looking at doing this around the first quarter, around January or, you know, January, February or March. And so we can talk about that. So I would like to ask if there would be two of you all amongst this group who would be willing to partner with me so we can kind of make this happen. Um, and I have a lot of other things I can talk about, but like Milhouse said, we want to, you know, make this brief or what have you. But I think this is very, this is very important. Um, very, very important. I can also see students, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, benefiting from this as well. But we want to also, we want to start with our parents because that's our goal, parent parental engagement. So that's my presentation. Thank you so much, um, Chair Milhouse. So, Ms. Lundy, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Dr. Jackson hand is up, and I, I want to say this. I mean, I'm, I'm raising my hand, partner with you, right? Yeah. And, and to present to the PCAC, because I did want to present it in a way to see if this is an initiative that um, we would be willing to support Ms. Lundy with, um, and it, it aligns with us being able to train the trainers, right? And the trainers yeah. would be other parents who would then go and train other parents. Yeah. And um, it, it's it's helping parents also understand that going to the board is not always when something is wrong. Exactly. Right? You can go to the board to highlight when things are going well. And even when you're giving your testimony, it's better received that what I call the sandwich model, right? Mm -hmm. When you talk about something that is good or something that that you that is, is positive for you you can address what the concern is and then you close it out with what you can do and then what you're looking for you know the board in the school system to do and partner with you on and so dr jackson i have my hand raised to volunteer i will definitely <laughs> help you miss lundy i just think this is such a phenomenal training module to put out there. We do have parents who, do, who just need to understand how to go about doing this. And it's not only helpful for them coming to the Board of Education, but that's in life. Yeah. Those are life skills that you're talking about. So okay. I would love to support you. And, and thank you. Chair Milhouse, can I say one little quick thing? Yes. I mean, um, well, for my, <clears throat> this is a personal thing to me too, because when I, when I started, when I had the the vision or the inclination that God put on my heart to run for elected office, it was like you just thrust in it. I had no background, nothing in this. I always was involved in politics since high school, college, and all that good stuff. But what I found was I didn't know how to do certain things. And so I learned on the job, if you will. And so, you know, I was very ignorant, lack of knowledge, didn't know about how important it was for me to get out there. And I'm advocating on behalf of other people, but really I'm advocating on behalf of myself. 
because I'm a resident as well. And so <clears throat> it's very important that the parents get out there and, and do this. It's, it's so important because you, the, the legislators are listening. Because when people ask the question, well, how do I know what I'm saying is being heard? They're listening. They're listening. If enough of us get together, one person can make a difference. And, you know, all of these people on this, in this thing, we're all one person. But look at all of the numbers. <laughs> okay. So I'm so happy that you decided to partner with me to make this happen. I think it's going to be phenomenal. And we no, can work so with I, our PTSAs. Yeah. So what I would like to do is, uh, is bring this to the committee um, to vote, um, to move this forward as a recommendation um, from the PCAC, right? Um, a, as a, um, a training that can be a part of maybe the Parent Institute component um, that we can get some support around um, reaching and building that capacity. But we, we need assistance to share this information with the broader group right, with the other parent leaders, um, yeah. because those parent leaders who are running the PTAs, PTOs, parent groups also have access to other parents, right? Yeah. And, and so it, it's not for us to try to go out and get to all the schools. It's to how can we connect with these individuals to really help when people are up there utilizing that three minutes of time, that they are being very impactful. And, and I know because I've done it for 11 years. Right. And I, I'm teaching my children how to do the same thing and how to write testimony, how to do research. So if my third graders can do it right, then we all can do it. Right. And, and so um, I, I want to put this to the committee um, for a vote and um, open it up for any further discussion at this time um, before we go into vote. If we have any questions, comments. And so I want to move into um, recommending that we move the civic engagement proposed training on how to prepare and testify, um, a guide to prepare district residents to give official testimony. Um, we move that forward. Uh, Ms. Lundy will get it together. We'll get it packaged so we can submit it to the board um, for recommendation to um, get their input on having this as a training um, that is utilized throughout PGCPS for um, parent leaders who will lead the charge. And uh, we, are, we would begin by doing the train the trainer and continue to roll it out. Chairman, Chairwoman Milhouse, I would like to move that the Parent Community Advisory Council mm -hmm. uh, moves forward with presenting the and see is how to prepare a testify module um, to an action item for the PCAC. Give a second, Chairman. I'll second the motion to move forward as an action item. Thank you, Mr. Epps. Can we take roll call? the vote um yes uh on the motion to officially move the uh, community engagement program to a training program to an action item uh reverend dr orlando jermaine vago mr will epps dr sheila jackson aye uh, Ms. Carletta Lundy? Aye. Chair Dolores Millhouse? Aye. Um, Dr. Sharon Porter? Uh, T. Carter Ross, that's aye. Uh, Vice Chair Keisha Thorpe? Keisha Thorpe? Aye. Uh, Ms. Kiara Walker? Aye. Ms. Robin Wood? Robin Welsh. Welch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, Robin Welsh. Aye. And Ms. Lise Wood. That's uh, eight votes in favor. Okay, All so right. the most passes. Thank you so much. Let's make it happen. Congratulations, Ms. Lundy. So you got to let us do it. Congratulations to our parents. 
Congratulations. Yes, we got so less than 30 days to package it up so we can send it forward. So I'll be contacting you too so we can work on this. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank y'all. So, so I, I appreciate, um, and th this is to me what happens when we are collectively working together um, as the coalition to bring forward ideas on how do we um, improve people's experience with PGCPS. Um, and we want individuals to know that not only are we needing them to be a part of the change that happens, but we need them to provide recommend, not recommendations, but testimonies about the great things that are happening because the, the press is coming to the board meetings, right? So that's a great place to talk about all the great things that are also happening in PGCPS. And, and so um, thank you, Ms. Lundy. Um, I, I will say that Mr. Dr. Reverend Dr. Bago will also um, be providing some recommendations um, and Mr. Epps as well on engagement in those specific areas that they have. And so hopefully in the October, well, really November report um, that we can send some recommendations um, forward about how we really need to engage these specialty areas, right? Because that's a lot of capacity building. And Dr. Jackson, you know, it now falls under you, community partnership. So, you know, we got the right person right here, a part of the committee. We're so excited. So we're going to move now to um, um, item three, follow-up items and next steps. And right now, the, the biggest follow-up item is what we have with the vacancy. So Mr. Briggs and Ms. Rivera um, Forbes, thank you. Ms. Forbes is here. Um, she had another meeting, so she jumped on. So we appreciate you, Ms. Forbes, for coming on with us. Um, and so that really is the biggest thing. So I know there is something um, that was proposed to change the timeline because I asked for it to be extended as we are making these um, updates. So I know you're also waiting to hear from everyone um, to approve um, or come into some type of alignment for the extension, Mr. Briggs? You um, sure, but also you're you're uh, you're not saying anything is an answer. So that means it'll be extended. If I don't hear back, um, by right. the, then I'll just extend it to uh, to the twenty second. The only one point I want to add to that is just that um, the difference between that is if it was a September fifteenth deadline, then we could probably move fast. That's assuming we get enough names um, in as nominations and also in the application process for the September twenty first board meeting. If we do it on the 22nd, that's obviously after the board meeting. So it will be the next board meeting that we'd have, you know, um, introductions of uh, new field roles for those vacancies. So, but I think either way, it's like, it's a positive regardless as we have more time if we do the 22nd. Um, but, you know, it's just a choice of moving faster and having those vacancies filled versus waiting a little bit longer. Thank you for that. And, and I'll say this, we, we've been waiting since, since March or, or since the beginning for most of the vacancies. So, I mean, I think just making sure that we give people time, it's more important that we give them the time to apply when everything is now um, up and running. Um, and then you all have enough time to review, right? Um, and, and make the right selection for, because this is a big commitment and we, we want individuals to understand that this is not an opportunity to um, have face time with people. It's, it's an opportunity for us to come together and, and get to work. Right, because we, we are here to advise you all. And that's what we're um, going to continue to push for. And the other piece is the follow up um, regarding the request to meet with the board and board leadership. Um, we're still waiting for that um, to come through. So once that comes through, you'll let us know, right? Yes, so uh, um, um, uh, board member um, Rain Forbes and I uh, had a discussion about that today. So we're going to draft up um, essentially an email that's going to be for, and I, and I want to just mention, um, thank you, um, Chair Milhouse, for framing at the beginning that you want the entire PCAC to be there, because that was something I was talking to the student member about. I thought that it really be important that all of you all were in the room to have the discussion versus um, just you know, a few individuals. Um, mm -hmm. So our goal is to make sure that we get that over requesting the superintendent, um, board leadership, and then also the appropriate um, staff. So what I would love to do is send a follow-up to you and the rest of the PCAC around what priorities you might wanna discuss with the superintendent, um, just so that he's prepared. 
So if there's a, like a list of things, then he'll know if he needs to bring the appropriate staff person to join that meeting or not, um, just to address some of those things if there are any questions. Um, so that's a follow-up that you can expect to see from me in, a, in an email. So tomorrow. one of the things I, I want to just jump in real quick, because since we met with the superintendent and his and chief of staff um, yesterday, um, right now, it, it really is um, meeting with the board, right? Because... Um, I, I do think that we need a, a joint one with everyone, um, but I think there's some things that we need to have some clarity and set some boundaries with, with the board and the PCAC and what that looks like um, and making sure that there's a clear understanding of who we are as the advisory council um, and what everybody may have as their own perception of their PCAC member and what that's supposed to look like. So we, we we may want to have um, some other offline discussion um, because this has been a, a, a long, you know, request, long standing request. So, um, yeah, I think, I think there's a lot of balls moving at one time. Um, and so, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, let's align. It sounds like it, yeah, it's kind of evolving. So maybe let's align and get clear and make sure that everyone's aware of what it is we want to do. I think the top line is just, we want to make sure we get clarity around what the purpose of the meeting is. So we, we can um, work to set up a, a follow-up meeting to discuss that and then share all that information around what we'll do in our plan moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. That, that, that'll be great. Um, and so next steps um, is just to get the follow-up. Um, uh, if we can, uh, set some type of communication um, that will happen between, you know, the applications that come in, where you all are in the process of reviewing and next steps to get a, to get a better understanding of what happens 